Good evening, and with only three weeks to go until Midsummer Night, a special hello to those of you uh, huddled round the fire in your overcoats, having abandoned the barbecue. In the news this week, as the doors open for the London Anti-Terrorist Conference, a last-minute search reveals a minor lapse in security. <laughs> uh, in Scotland, Sir Clive Sinclair unveils the new steering wheel-free car. And in Strasbourg, uh, John Major heads home after refusing to cooperate with the EU Committee on the Standardisation of Door Sizes. <laughs> Our first guest is an American comedian about whom the Washington Post has said the lousier he feels, the funnier he is, which is why we've put him next to Ian Hislop tonight, <laughs> Rich Hall. And on Alan Davies' team, an outspoken Tory MP who, when he's writing spy books, is called Nigel West, and when he's voting against his own government, is called something unbroadcastable, Rupert Allison. <laughs> so now that everyone's been introduced, let's break up into couples and make meaningless small talk over the opening film round. Ian and Rich, your witness. Ah, uh, that's uh, Clinton claiming that uh, he was in a room with Paula Jones and he only showed her his Etch-a-Sketch. There's, there's the actual Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> that's Paula Jones who claims uh, he asked her to twist the knobs of his Etch-a-Sketch. There's uh, Hillary Clinton. Nobody knows what's happened to her. And what's the story behind it all? I have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> Yes, uh, it uh, had something to do with your president. Yes. Mm. The man who smoked pot and didn't inhale. That's all anybody really knows about the president. <laughs> anybody who wastes good pot is going to waste taxpayers' money, I can tell you. That. <laughs> That's all we know. That's all we care about. Right. There's an election coming up, and, uh, you know. Is Bob Dole ever going to catch up? No. Bob Dole is uh, claiming that uh, he wants to go to war with China over intellectual property, which is actually pirated CD tapes. But he likes to call him intellectual property, and so, yeah, I can just see Michael Bolton sitting at home watching that going, Woohoo! I'm an intellectual! I'm an intellectual! Who would want to be president of the United States? Who's that arrogant that they'd say, hey, you know what the country needs? Me! They don't. <laughs> I'll settle for Torquay. <laughs> but all his friends are involved in a big land fraud. Yeah. His friends have all gone to prison and he hasn't he? Because he's stuck inside a little TV and they can't get him. <laughs> if yeah. he doesn't get re-elected, he can go and work for the SFO as a professional defendant. And then he can give evidence for Azul Nadir and all the other guys that the SFO have never been able to convict. Well, and he'll finally stick it on them. Bill as Clinton. he did with Paula Jones. Ah. Um, <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, yes. Blood. Mm. Yes, it is uh, the latest blow to uh, beleaguered uh, President Bill Clinton, whose uh, former business associates have been found guilty in the Whitewater trial. President Clinton's testimony was uh, presented on a videotape. The cassette was an extremely valuable piece of evidence, as it also featured the last episode of Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Alan and Rupert, you're to suck on this. Oh, this is backstage at Oasis again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bloke with some headphones on. Oh! Another government minister. Government minister. <laughs> it's another food scare, invented by the media, once again. In what way? Uh, well, <laughs> some years ago we had a scare over uh, apple juice. Then we had another scare... I've never been scared of apple juice, really. <laughs> it didn't run. <laughs> then there was a scare... <laughs> and Ribena. Yeah, I was scared of that. Yeah. <laughs> Then we had egg scare. Right. And then soon after that, there was a mild beef scare. Didn't hear about that one. <laughs> and now there's a phthalate scare. Yes. <laughs> These additives are no good for you, apparently. Yeah, what do they do? They shrink they the size of your testes. Or of they rats. stop them. Rats' testes. <laughs> they give it to this rat in huge quantities, and their balls get 10% smaller, and they have a slight infertility problem. Isn't that rather a good thing? It's good for rats. <laughs> I don't know if rats would agree with you about that. Where are rats getting all this artificial milk from anyway? <laughs> Daily Mirror Canteen, that's right. Well, down the artificial milk shop. Mm. Now you your balls, but it tastes great. <laughs> 
that is the government causing a complete panic amongst uh, parents who use baby milk by telling them uh, that there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, according to the Ministry of Agriculture, the source of uh, the anxiety are the chemicals known as phthalates, uh, which were developed in the early 50s in order to assist Scrabble players. <laughs> Ian and Rich, pray silence. It's a boat. It's the Klu Klux Klan. Mm. And now this is a load of monks. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean something else in America? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what does monk mean in America then? It's, uh, it's kind of like a mackerel. <laughs> and, uh, These yeah. are the monks not fish. Monks as in religious order on Caldy Island who've made a television commercial to... Um, flog themselves and their island to tourists. They so make um, perfume and chocolate. What would be a nice smell for a monk? What would they go for? I don't really know. Celibacy yeah. for men. <laughs> 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 the, the big seller. Yeah. I know for the fact that you went to a monk's school because I read about it in the paper. I went to a monastery. And, you, and, and one of them flogged you. To who? <laughs> no, because you were late for rugby. Yeah, it's true. What yeah. did he flog you with? Did he just he, rip he... his rope off his habit and... <laughs> did you have to take your trousers out? Were you Rupert the Bear? I, I can only tell you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it is uh, the reformed Cistercian Order of Monks on Caldy Island who are trying to attract tourists using a TV advertising campaign. Brother Robert the Abbot, uh, who has lived on the island since 1960 and regrets the intrusion of the media, told the Daily Telegraph, we have a strict rule of silence here. Then added, oh bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Bang goes the celibacy fan. <laughs> 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 Alan and Rupert, a sporting classic for you. That's Denmark. 96. That's um, a bull bloke waving his arms about. <laughs> oh, violinist. Do you know what? Can't about that. Ah. Tony Adams, Paul Gascoigne. There's and, Gazza again. Uh, <laughs> Gazza going out for the night. <laughs> The opening bit is that a really disgraceful bit of programming by the BBC is putting um, Beethoven's Ode to Joy um, near anything connected with football. <laughs> <laughs> it's Europe's picked it. We haven't picked it. We don't want it. I Who's we? Picked it. What do you want? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, Rule Britannia would do quite well. Um, rather inappropriate, given we're going to get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it is. It's the controversial build-up to uh, Euro 96. Ode to Joy was written by Ludwig van Beethoven, who was pictured this week by the ever-helpful Daily Express as he'd looked if he'd played for Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, obviously, Ludwig went to the same hairdresser as Kevin Keegan. But, uh, <laughs> and Mick Hucknall. Which uh, Euro trash uh, sounds uh, the final whistle on this first leg, and at this stage we may be heading for extra time with the scores keenly balanced at four all. <laughs> with the film round out of the way then, it leaves us free to move on to round two, which this week takes the form of a film round. Uh, or an American TV film round, to be precise, namely James Hewitt and Anna Pasternak's magnificent Princess in Love, the heartrending story of a caring princess and a well-hung guards officer. <laughs> the movie has yet to be premiered on uh, British television for reasons that will become all too apparent. The team's task is to tell us what happens next, and perhaps harder, who the characters are meant to be. Uh, here's the first clip. Enjoy, if you can. Uh, it's Jodie Foster, isn't it? They're looking for a waitress. Here she is. <laughs> this is Camilla. Is this Camilla? That's Camilla, I reckon. Which one? The one in the black tie? No. <laughs> oh, there. Oh, right. Look at oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, that'll be Camilla. Evil. That's Cruella the... Parker Bowles. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you got Camilla and the other two. Charles and Di, innit? Mm -hmm. They can't be Charles and Di. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon that happens? Um, I reckon that it's Charles dancing with Camilla and he shouldn't be. And Di's caught him. That's Camilla walking in. Charles is dancing with Lady Di for the first and last time ever. And he's pretending that he's meeting or seeing Camilla for the very first time. Let's just have a look and see uh, how right you are, Rupert. Don't you think it's a bit crowded? The three of us in this marriage, Camilla? <laughs> so, r wrong on every count, I think, Rupert. <laughs> Listen to your captain, mate. <laughs> yes. I don't know I picked you. I could have had Peter Beardsley. He's available, you know.
Uh, it is the famous three in a marriage joke there, uh, slightly reworded so that it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> an exceptionally <laughs> tense moment, although happily the butler soon came in with a tray of Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> The, uh, the action moves on, you'll be disappointed to learn, uh, to Kensington Palace. What about your mother-in-law? My mother-in-law runs the palace putting lights out. Steady. She orders them to turn over soiled sheets to save on the laundry bill. I don't believe it. It's terribly but... amusing. Well, you don't have to live with them. But I'm being terribly naughty. <laughs> What's she doing under the table then? It's terribly naughty. <laughs> um, Will Carlin's down there. That's <laughs> going. Um, the only naughty thing she's doing there is actually eating something. Uh, no, she run out to the loo and throw up. Is that what's going to happen next? <laughs> Fall down the stairs. Or the Queen will come in and go. Oh look. <laughs> she next? was telling tales about Rain Spencer. Hmm about how mean her stepmother was. So perhaps Rain Spencer runs in with an axe. I think he, <laughs> Keanu so... Reeves comes in on a motorcycle and crashes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this, I know. That's <laughs> so it's Keanu Reeves, Rain Spencer with an away. axe, uh, or the Queen going, ooh, look. <laughs> uh, OK, well, let's have a look. I'm being terribly naughty. Don't stop. <laughs> With you, I don't have to be on my best behaviour. <laughs> if you just leave that there, thank you, I won't be leaving anymore this evening. <laughs> uh, yes, she dismisses the footman, is the answer. They um, look very pleased, them two, going off together, didn't they? <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, cut to the chase then. Are you quite sure? I've never been more sure of anything. Not keen. It's all right. Really, it is. Oh, they have a cup of gold blend. <laughs> She opens her mouth and she's got big teeth like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite that interesting, actually. Um, Lizard he, tongue like that. He was educated. <laughs> um, he, he offers to show her his watercolours. No, uh, Rich? Yes, it is. I just had a question. What's gold blend? <laughs> <laughs> also, earlier, what was SFO? Because I'm still back on page. <laughs> Uh, Ian will explain everything. Uh... SFO is a type of Colombian coffee. Yeah. Do ask for it in restaurants. <laughs> and gold blend is a rather unpleasant sort of sexual deviancy. <laughs> I always like to help Americans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, going to have a hell of a night tonight, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. It's all right. Really, it is. It's treason. <laughs> On the other hand, some things are worth dying for. <laughs> Why is that treason? I call it snogging. Yeah. <laughs> was that still Charles, or is he? You've lost the plot completely. Because that, 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 that would be treason. That's Hewitt, that, right? That's Hewitt. Yeah. Mm. Giving a oh, tongue that's sandwich. Hewitt. That's I Hewitt. thought that was Prince Charles. <laughs> if uh, you have an oh, affair treason, yeah. with the wife of the heir to the throne, you can be Tower mm. of London stuff. Yeah. Noodle with fourteenth uh, century Lady Lady law. That's it. That's the trouble is nowadays be pretty full Tower of London. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't win the Triple Crown again, would it? Um, 
After Diana's panorama and James Hewitt's uh, catarama, the tabloids have dubbed this film Bedarama. Uh, luckily, James Hewitt kept his underpants on, or it could well have been Bananarama. <laughs> Which uh, movie news brings us reeling to the end of the second take, and the position is that uh, Ian and Rich are gradually losing the plot with four, whilst Alan and Rupert are threatening to steal the show with five. <laughs> and so to the round that is our odd one out, given that no other round is, uh, Alan, your four uh, media darlings are Jon Snow, Anthony Blunt, Betty Boothroyd, and James Hewitt. Oh. What's happening with oh, that okay. horse there? <laughs> <laughs> now we know what was going on under the table. <laughs> He's going, that's treason, get you. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Blunt, spy. I've got to be very careful what I say about the speaker, otherwise I'll end up in the Tower well, she of London. Was she wasn't she accused Go of being... Go on, risk it. All right, she can noodle with a KGB officer, K how's that? And they, people thought she Good. was getting yeah. on too well uh, with a KGB, maybe, yeah. a spy. Yep. Hewitt thought that he was being spied on. It turned out to be a horse. <laughs> uh, John mm -hmm. Snow revealed the other day that he had been asked to be a spy. So the odd one out is uh, Hewitt. John on the Snow base. would be a crap spy, wouldn't he? Because they give him a little secret and then he goes, and no! <laughs> Uh, the answer is that MI5 have tried to recruit all of them except uh, James Hewitt, who was uh, not approached to spy for England, although he has been spied upon, as this thankfully final extract from Prince Charles's favourite <laughs> film uh, conclusively shows. I was told this was a protection stakeout in CIRA. I'm a surveillance officer, not a voyeur. <laughs> <laughs> and after one more game of Twister, they decided to have it. <laughs> Rupert, your four oddballs are uh, George Best, Thomas Cook, Ian Mills, MP, and Alastair Campbell. Sobriety? Could it be sobriety? Might be. Uh, George Best, not known for sobriety. No, he's a drunkard, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> Alistair Campbell. When was he drunk? When was Alistair Campbell drunk? Yeah. Permanently. Really? <laughs> yeah, some years ago. Because mm. you sued him, didn't you? People reveal all in court eventually, Ian. Good. Uh, <laughs> um, Sounds great, I've never been. <laughs> It's Rupert's in all the time. Probably will today after tomorrow. You're not mm. going to sue me. I'm the captain. No, no, no. I'm on your side, yes. <laughs> sue him. It's, it's not done. But you, you reckon he was drunk for years, Alistair Campbell? Uh, I think that he does, he does admit that. Yeah, he did drink 15 pints of bitter, uh, four bottles of wine and half a bottle of whiskey during a lunch uh, with David <laughs> Miller. <laughs> with that David Miller. That is fantastic. Miller. How did he do that? <laughs> before he gave evidence. <laughs> that was a not untypical day, as you put normal? it. I suppose you'd have to, to get through lunch with David <laughs> Mellor. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least, yes. Who's David Mellor? <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> David Mellor is the current Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> uh -huh. The answer is that they're all teetotalers, apart from Tory MP uh, Ian Mills. Uh, who was uh, recently cautioned for drunkenness after being found slumped semi-conscious in a London doorway. Uh, Ian Mills denied being drunk, saying that he had tripped over whilst carrying a stack of heavy files, uh, after which it was perfectly normal to lie there for several hours singing, Show Me the Way to Go Home. <laughs> Uh, on his 50th birthday last week, George Best pledged to give up drinking for a whole year. The next morning he woke up clutching his temples, saying, Christ, I hope I didn't say anything stupid last night. <laughs> uh, Victorian teetotaler Thomas Cook invented the so-called package tour as a way of distracting young men from alcohol abuse. Possibly the worst idea anyone has ever had. <laughs> uh, Rich, your, uh, your four British institutions are the Rolling Stones, yeah. Prince Charles, King Alfred the Alsatian. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the National Federation of Fish Friars. 
Jeez. All right, uh, I've got this one. The Rolling Stones have been known for prodigious drug consumption, have had their faces in big bowls of cocaine. What's cocaine? It's, uh, <laughs> it's something the Archbishop t does a lot. <laughs> So I'm going to go with the fish fryer because the other three have uh, all had their faces stuck in bowls at some time. Um. <laughs> I could give you a clue if you want uh, any help. Does everything to do with gold blend? <laughs> <laughs> the, the clue Just is clue. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Manchester United, and uh, the Sun newspaper. Well, that clears it up. Yeah. <laughs> The, Can we have another clue? Uh, well, the involving the, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am going to have to put you out of your misery, aren't you? The odd one out is Alfred the Alsatian, uh, as he's the only one not to have issued his own credit card. Oh. <laughs> what? Um, the Rolling Stones, Prince Charles, the National Federation of Fish Fries have all. Uh, however, Alfred was sent a credit card application form by American Express uh, last October, which obviously caused great amusement at the pub where he lives. Uh, as they were only too well aware that he still hadn't paid off his diners club bill. <laughs> uh, the Rolling Stones credit card has a picture of Keith Richards on it, uh, with an expiry date of any time in the next week. Uh, and finally, in this round, Ian, uh, your pick and mix selection consists of F.W. Woolworth, Sheena Easton, London Bridge, and Northumbrian Water. I think um, this is an American question. Uh, London Bridge is in Lake Havasu, Arizona. The idiot who bought this, and this mm. is actually not the London Bridge, this is another bridge. Mm. He thought it was by yes. an uncle Tower Bridge that opens. Yes, and then he put it over the river, but uh, it wouldn't fit over the river, so they actually diverted a river <laughs> to put, run under the... Uh, so they didn't have the right bridge and they didn't have a river, but apart no. from that... <laughs> it was a good buy. Perfect plan. <laughs> Sheila Easton. Sheena Easton's done very well in the States. Mm -hmm. She's saying, Look, my baby there. takes the morning train. <laughs> yeah. That's the only piece of pop knowledge I've ever known. <laughs> she went to America, and now she's made millions out of real estate in America. And all the rest have been bought or are trying to be bought by America. And she's buying America. So she's your winner. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> The answer is that uh, Northumbrian water is the odd one out as uh, it's the only one that is not American. Uh, with a name like Northumbrian water, it can only, of course, uh, be French. Uh, <laughs> Northumbrian water, Northeast water, uh, and Essex and Suffolk water have all been bought by the French company, uh, Lyonnais des Eaux, uh, who estimate that over here they can make ten times the profit that they're allowed to make over there in France off their French customers, uh, mainly because in France they're required to actually put some water in their reservoirs. <laughs> Uh, so, with uh, Californian sincerity, uh, we turn our back on round three and find that uh, Ian and Rich are experiencing problems point-wise with five, uh, whilst Alan and Rupert are kicking some considerable ass with eight. <laughs> and so lastly, by way of a grand finale, a chorus of dancing girls. It would have been nice, but instead it's the... <laughs> Considerably cheaper missing words round, an array of butchered headlines from the week's press, some of which uh, may have seen uh, the light of day first of all in this week's guest publication, the universally acclaimed Fish Friars Review, uh, the journal of the National Federation of Fish Friars, uh, the credit card people. So let's push off with uh, Cool Dudes Love What? That Charles and Diana movie. <laughs> Fish and Chip is the right answer. Ah. As, uh, as revealed exclusively in February's issue of Fish Fries Review, uh, which Alan obviously bought. Uh, next, what threat to sheep? Fish and chip. <laughs> James Hewitt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a lovely image. I mean, they're cool they're... dudes. Sort of fat, spotty dudes love <laughs> fried fish. I, I think we've just I stumbled like upon another <laughs> irrational prejudice, of <laughs> <obviously. laughs> uh, Gold blend. <laughs> Prison closure is, uh, is the answer. Ah. Uh, next, uh, Mrs. Bottomley swings what? Allegedly. <laughs> Cat three times over her shoulder to um, make voodoo attempt to improve health care. Uh, so you've heard of her then? <laughs> 
So what is low, Mr. Bottomley? It's, uh, I'll give you one for low. Uh, high and low is uh, the right oh, answer. Low. Culturally, uh, that is. Next, Fergie was, was that, what? Why was that in the fish fryer's review? Uh, <laughs> let me just explain. Not all in um, <laughs> Most of the questions are based on the newspapers. Headlines. It's just one or two that are taken from the fish fry of Fine. view. Not all of them. For right. example, prison closure threat to sheep. Didn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's press on. Uh... <laughs> it is very good that John Major over your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> look, if you look, oh, look, it's John Major <laughs> looking straight over. He's <laughs> going, one more vote, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one for him. As he talk, you can do him, can't you? Um, I can't actually, but you're yeah, right. Yeah, you can do major. Can't do major. Aren't you? I can't do major. Just pretend it's Jimmy Somerville, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't treat me this way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's saying over your shoulder, mate. <laughs> you wouldn't say that to Rupert. Rupert votes him. You saved him. Yeah. Only, only occasionally. One vote. You could have brought down the government. You let him off. You could have brought down the government. <laughs> You're nice. sacked. Nice thought. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the quiz. Um, uh, next, Fergie was what? Official? Fat. <laughs> uh, you don't bring um, down the government and you have a go at Fergie. <laughs> Fogged up brain. Uh, a drug zombie is how they put it. Oh, close. Uh, she spent years doped by slimming pills, according to a health guru from West Byfleet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, the PM has what up his sleeve? Nothing. Rupert Allison. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Absolutely Sorry, nothing. nothing. Not a sausage, not an idea, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Tattoo of Hitler. <laughs> Um, Sooty. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler was closest. German lavatory card is, uh, <laughs> is a rather bizarre answer. It's a reference to John Major's ability to play on the German obsession with cleanliness, in particular a lavatory bowl with an observation platform and which feces may be closely inspected. Um, <laughs> Which frenzied, if entirely unerotic, thrashing about uh, brings tonight's contest to a fitting anticlimax. And the end product is that this week's Desperate Dans are Ian and Rich with five, and this week's Hooray Henrys are Sorry. Alan and Rupert with 13. Beaten by Rupert Allison. Bodes well for when we next meet in court. <laughs> <laughs> And I leave you with news that Peruvian television announces the launch of their new programme, One Man and His Llama. <laughs> After racking his brain for several days, Prince Philip finally comes up with an original present idea for the Queen. <laughs> and in Tokyo, the sumo wrestling world is rocked by allegations of match rigging. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>